Gideon's attitude in a season of change. And we're going to be reading Job chapter 14, verse 14. Job chapter 14, verse 14. Champion's attitude in a season of change. Job chapter 14, verse 14. Job 14, 14. If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my hard service, I will wait till my change comes. Everybody say, I will wait till my change comes. If you're listening or watching for the first time this series, I will advise that you visit uh, uh, my YouTube channel or you can download the message on your way out and watch this series, even if you were here, to watch it from the beginning to this last part. That in, an, in a season of change, there is a particular attitude that is common to champions. Praise the Lord. I've told us before, I'll say it again, success has habits. Success is predictable. There is a way someone will be behaving. You can tell if he will succeed or if he will fail. There is a way you manage your business, you manage your career. It can be, te- it can be predicted if you will succeed or you fail. There is a way you manage your life, your health. Your health, too, is predictable. Amen. So to live, to be a champion is also predictable. To live a life of victory is predictable. To live a life of defeat is also predictable. So there are attitudes. Everybody say attitude. There are attitudes that champions, that is common with champions, that makes them win, even in seasons of change. Where I told us the world is going through series of changes. Change is becoming more rapid in this our generation. Amen. COVID-19 brought so many changes. The first that happened was that when we're moving close to 2000, it was predicted that because of the arrival of internet, things are going to change. And because internet came, ushered us into the new millennium in 2000, I mean, before to, um, internet started before 2000. Internet made a lot of changes. Hallelujah. COVID-19 came, COVID-19 too brought a lot of changes. People who enjoy the blessing of change are those who are willing, who understand the principles of change. If you're married, if you're not married now, when you get married, things are going to change. If you bring, if you get, if you're a bachelor now, and now you are planning to marry, the moment you get married, things are going to change because you are bringing in another person into your life, into your house. Somebody said, even when you bring a dog into the house, things will change. Abi? ordinary dog or cat, even when you just buy a cat, the moment you bring that into the house, things will have to change. You are going to have to have food for dog. You are going to have to have a doctor for dog. You are going to clean. You are going to have to hear some noise. So there is nothing. Life is a series of change. Seasons are changing. To everything, there is a purpose. Every time there is a, uh, there is a season. I'm sorry. There, yeah, there is a, to everything, there is a purpose. And to every time, there is a Uh, a purpose. You are going to see series of change in your life. And if you don't know how to manage change, sometimes those who cannot manage change end up being chained. Those who cannot manage change, they end up being what? Chained. You will not be chained. So we said so many things. I'm going to jump so that you can go and watch those messages. I'm going to jump to number what? Where are we now? Number 11. Please clap for that man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They don't give up easily. Champions, number 11, champions don't give up easily. One of the attitudes of champions in the season of change is that they don't give up easily. You have to develop a stubborn faith, a tenacity, a kind of tenacity within you. You have to be someone who will not give up on yourself, on your dream, on your vision on your business on your career you if we're going to win as a country we must not give up easily amen they don't give up easily everybody say i will not give up easily now david is a champ was a champion he lost his wife his children his property in first uh, samuel or second samuel chapter 30 he came back from battle and saw that they have taken everything from him he wanted to give up because he was crying but the Bible says he encouraged himself. Champions know how to encourage themselves so they don't give up easily. 
David lost everything and got up to pursue them until he has recovered. He, he lost everything. He fell down crying. He got up by himself and pursued the person who took everything and recovered everything from him. They don't give up easily. They don't give up easily. If you are the type you give up easily, that's not an attitude of a champion. People who live a winning life don't give up easily. They extend, they go the extra mile. They are so stubborn that it is the devil that gives up on them. They don't, the devil get tired of them. They weary the devil. You have to develop perseverance that is strong enough to weary your enemy. You have to develop perseverance. Maybe you are trying to stop a particular character. You have tried and tried. It's not working. Don't give up on yourself. Champions don't give up easily. It's easy. Sorry, it's not easy. What I'm talking about is not easy, but it's not impossible. What I'm talking about, I'm not saying it's that easy, but it's not impossible. You've got to make up your mind. I, if I, if I am going to succeed no matter what, I am going to make it no matter what. I'm moving forward no matter what. Are you following what I'm saying? I'm changing my story for the best no matter what. Things are going to get better for my family no matter what. You have to be that kind of person. If you're that type of person who gives up easily, changing your location does not change anything. Because there is nowhere you go in the world that you don't find some challenges. The challenges are just different. The challenges are different sizes and different shapes. But everywhere under the sun, there are challenges. There is nowhere you can run to and there will not be challenges. There is nobody you can, you can, you can, there is no business you can do that there are no challenges. I, I'll change my business. If you change it to another business, there are challenges waiting for you. Are you following me? There is practically nothing under the sun. That does not come with some difficulties and struggles. So your ability to hold the ground, your ability to stay, your staying power, like we said last Sunday, your staying power is important for you to succeed. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you want to win and keep winning, you mustn't give up. When this church started and things were not working, I used to say something that was very common every day. I would say, Satan, if anybody gives up in this situation, it can never be me. It has to be you. I'm sure when Satan saw the attitude that this one would not give up, he left. You see, you, the Bible says when Satan tried Jesus in Mark, Matthew chapter 4, he left for a while. He came back again, but he left for a while. You have to develop that strong will, that tenacity, that we hold on to your dream, hold on to your vision, and say, despite the changes happening, I will make it. Despite what is going on in Nigeria, I will succeed. I will say, I will succeed. Champions have stubborn faith. Their faith is very stubborn. Like the three Hebrew men's faith. The three bo Hebrew boys. They said, King, if you think we'll give up in this matter, you are joking. Even if God did not deliver us, that's the level they've got into. Let's assume God refused to answer my prayer, I'll still not give up. You need to get to that point and that junction in your life where you say to Satan face to face, Jesus is Lord, whether it's raining. Jesus is Lord, whether it's not raining. Are you following me? Are you following me? That's what they call stubborn faith. No matter what. That's how you win. No? That doesn't mean that you have submitted to failure. That is how to win. Because Satan gets tired too. Satan can be tired. When he tries and tries and tries and tries and you're not giving up, he leaves you for a while, just like he did to Jesus. I pray for someone here. Whatever difficulty you are facing, we give way for you. Amen. You're not saying amen. amen. You will see the end of your affliction. Amen. You will see the end of your struggle. Amen. Your struggle will not see your hand. Amen. You will see the end of all your battles. Amen. In that parenting, in difficulty you are facing in raising your children, you will see the end of the struggle. Amen. Those children will turn out well. Amen. To the shame of the devil and the glory of God. The struggle you are facing currently in your business, you see the end. That business will triumph. That business will flourish. That business will grow. That business will grow. If it is God who, look, the only thing you should go and pray about is God. Hope this is your will. Because that's the only condition. Hope I'm standing at the center of your will. Hope what I'm doing is you. If it is God, if you stay there, you succeed. Amen. It will shock you there was a time when this church was not growing. There was a time when things were not working. When we were in debt. When we could not pay our bills. When the trouble was left and right. 
Hallelujah. When my car, the, the, this, you know, there, is, there are some car, they dash you, it's like a problem. May you not be given a car that is a problem. I was given a car, very nice car, but that car, the problem that car gave me, every time I see the same brand of that car and the color, I remove my face. That is, although my, that is, may affliction arise up the second time. Praise God. Affliction will not rise up what? That car, it's not just that that car is stubborn. That car will not stop until we're about to climb the Kedja Bridge. When we are probably at the early part of the Kedja Bridge, that's when it will stop. I cannot count how many times. And every way, every, almost every two, two days, we always have something to do in the Kedja. We're holding fellowships in the Kedja. And I'll go with some of my associates. And we'll be coming back. While we're climbing that bridge, it will just stop. I cannot count how many times we'll remove our suit and push it to roll it down. You now roll it down, you jump inside, you press, press, it will not answer you. Now, with all the challenges all around, I keep telling Satan, if anybody gives up in this matter, it can never be me. For me, I've burnt the bridge behind me. Forward ever, backward never. That's how champions believe. I mean, that's how champions behave. They act not never to give up. Number, number 12. Number 12, champions' attitude in a season of change. Number 12, they are not men pleasers. They are not men pleasers. You see, when things are changing around you, you may, it may require you to use some strategies that are not common. And if you are the type who likes to, if you are the type who likes to please men, you are obsessed to pleasing people, you may not be able to apply such principles. I don't know what example to give right now, but you, I'm sure some of us understand what I'm saying. There are times when you face all kinds of challenges left and right, and Satan knows that the principles you will use is one of the most criticized principles. The steps you will take, some people will not like it. If a man pleaser, you will never take such steps. You may need to do things differently in such a time like this. You may need to do things differently in such a time like this. You may need to do things differently in your seasons of change. But ladies and gentlemen, if you are obsessed to pleasing people, you will not do it. Because some of these things are not things that are common. Let me give you a practical example. In the, when, in the early days of this ministry, I, I had shortage of cash, really shortage of cash. I was, I was practicing architecture, but the work were not coming often. I had one or two sites, but you know when you just start something, the money was very few. And we were spending the money also on the church. And I was paying a three-bedroom flat rent. And I was paying, I was the one paying the first staff we had because the church couldn't pay. I think I was paying that young man six or seven thousand naira per month. But six or seven thousand naira was like two hundred million naira. <laughs> was a lot of money. It was difficult to get. And and my I came from a family, especially my mother's side, where we do a lot of uh, wedding, you know, these uh, and they're always taking clothes. They are always taking ashwebi, taking color of filageli. There was no way I would be able to live that kind of life and not run into debt. So I, and I faced the reality. I, and, I told, and I told myself, I can't maintain this kind of life. And they would still say we should contribute to money, 10,000, 5,000, sometimes even more. People drop on red key, you know. So what I do is that every time there is a, something to do, and I know the only thing I have is maybe 10,000 naira. I will go and drop what I have. I will not buy a shoebi. I will ask for the color. I will go and look for any color that looks close to it. And I used, I used to have this white lace. You know what? White lace fits every occasion. Whether it is very, go and get white lace. If you, white lace. <laughs> every occasion, you just be changing the color. So I wear my white lace and I will wear my other color. You know, and some people will be mad at me. They used to think that I have plenty of money, but I don't want to spend the money. But I was the one who knows I didn't have what they thought I had. Amen. But I wasn't ready to please them. Oh, they will call me names. They will say, can you call? I knew that a season is coming. When if they call three colors, five colors, we'll buy it together. I knew a season is coming. But if for me to get to that season, I must not crash in this season. 
for me to get to that season, I cannot, you see, I have to be, I have to be fine to get to that. So I was, I knew one day is coming when there'll be wedding, there'll be that, there'll be this, and I'll be one of the people that will do well. If they like, let them call five different clothes, I'll buy. I knew that day was coming. But for that day to come, for me to be there and be alive, I have to adjust to do certain things that may not be pleasing people. Are you following me? Are you following me? You see, if you are in such season like me, and somebody is having a wedding in Kano, and they make your son, uh, what do you call those little words? Huh? Ring bearer. And the wedding is in Kano. 